Uh, well, thank you all for coming uh, this morning. It wasn't so clear that anyone was going to be able to uh, make it, in, including me. Um, so uh, I appreciate you all braving the weather and, and coming out uh, for this. And uh, I appreciate uh, being invited uh, to participate uh, in this panel. Um, uh, my participation's already been uh, rewarded. The conversation so far uh, has been uh, quite good and has been uh, interesting uh, to me uh, and has been conducted at a high level, so I'm about to bring it down a notch uh, with, with my own contribution, so I apologize in advance. Um, uh, and it didn't occur to me, actually, to um, uh, uh, interrogate the, um, uh, the uh, labeling of the conference itself of Originalism uh, 2.0, although it's an interesting uh, thought um, as to what exactly uh, that means, and, and um, I have thoughts about it. And some of those, I think, will leak through um, in what I was planning on saying. And I'm happy to come back, actually, um, and talk more um, about uh, what originalism uh, might uh, mean today. I'm probably somewhat guilty of contributing uh, to uh, both the uncertainty about what originalism means as well as the possibility of software updates uh, in originalism since I've written in part about the idea of new originalism uh, and, and the like. Um, but what I wanted to focus on was, uh, was the uh, question that was posed um, to this panel about the extent to which originalism uh, is a rationalization uh, for uh, conservatism uh, particularly. Um, and I wanted to break that down into uh, two possible uh, kinds of um, inquiries um, that I think are slightly different um, about ways in which we might think of originalism uh, being um, connected uh, to conservatism. Uh, Conservatism. Uh, one as a method of constitutional interpretation uh, and one as a kind of political theory um, and how we think about judicial review um, and uh, constitutional uh, authority. Uh, and because I think those are, are slightly uh, uh, different and raise uh, slightly different um, issues. Um, so um, first, uh, thinking about originalism as a, a method of constitutional interpretation, to what degree um, uh, might original meaning um, in that context um, uh, intersect uh, with um, conservatism? I tend to think in general um, that at least in theory um, that there are various ways in which uh, originalism and uh, conservatism uh, can be uh, quite reasonably uh, pulled apart um, such that uh, one is not simply a rationalism, a rationalization uh, for the other, um, although obviously um, uh, there's a lot of interest among uh, conservatives in originalism, um, although increasingly there's some interest among liberals and uh, originalism um, as well, um, and some conservatives continue to resist uh, notions of originalism as well. So why can they be teased apart such that we shouldn't simply think uh, that originalism is uh, a rationalization uh, for uh, conservatism? Uh, well, one is that uh, conservatism itself um, is uh, quite various. Uh, so anyone who knows anything about uh, conservatism uh, knows that it's not all clear uh, what we mean uh, by the the label um, itself. Uh, what political program um, are we talking about? What ideological movement are we talking about? What kinds of commitments um, are we talking about uh, when we start talking about uh, conservatism and what kinds of implications of originalism uh, do we think it's supposed to be uh, supporting? Um, uh, so uh, do we think uh, that originalism is uh, supposed to be uh, producing uh, results that are consistent with libertarianism or do we think it's supposed to be producing uh, results that are consistent with social conservatism, uh, for example. It's unlikely that it's simultaneously doing uh, both at the same time, and yet conservatism um, is often uh, used uh, to cover um, both. At the same time, though, the conservative program, to the extent that it has a set of specific policy commitments, uh, legislative programs that it supports, um, specific kinds of ideological uh, commitments, uh, tends to vary um, over time. Uh, while we think there are certain eternal truths um, that conservatives are interested in, uh, the fact of the matter that when it comes to particular kinds of policies that we tend to support, the kinds of things that we're interested in, uh, for example, whether or not the Constitution uh, would tend to lead us to uphold or not uphold, um, the fact of the matter is that the cons conservative commitments on those things uh, tend to evolve um, over time, especially if you take a relatively uh, long perspective. And so if you're interested in um, uh, 
uh, issues of um, historical inquiry, and you turn those historical inquiries on things like conservative thought um, itself, and you pay any attention to conservative thought over the course of the 20th century, uh, you find the conservatives have changed a lot um, over the course of the 20th century in terms of the kinds of things they're committed to, the kinds of things they think, uh, what kinds of policy programs uh, they support, what kinds of specific policies they think uh, drop out um, of uh, conservative uh, beliefs um, and ideals um, over time. On the other hand, the original meaning of the Constitution is relatively fixed. Um, right? So once we start engaging in a process of interpreting what the Constitution is, uh, at least in principle, uh, the Constitution has uh, a fixed meaning. Uh, we can identify uh, what it is, um, uh, fuzzy around the edges, difficult to do, et cetera. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the originalist enterprise is committed to the notion of trying to figure out uh, what the fixed meaning of the Constitution is. Um, uh, once we're uh, thinking about uh, doing that, the intersection of thinking about a fixed meaning of the Constitution with uh, this fairly variable uh, conservative program um, is uh, not going to uh, mesh uh, very uh, cleanly um, or very well. Uh, in addition, the Constitution uh, was simply written for other purposes. Um, and we'd be fooling ourselves if we think that uh, any modern uh, political uh, or ideological uh, movement um, is going to overlap perfectly uh, with the particular sets of uh, commitments, rules, and principles uh, embedded uh, in a 200-year-old uh, document that was written for uh, other reasons. Um, uh, modern liberals uh, have certain commitments that are likely to overlap with the U.S. Constitution. Modern conservatives are likely to have, of whatever stripe, are likely to have uh, certain kinds of commitments that overlap uh, with the U.S. Constitution, uh, but neither are likely to have perfect claims um, to uh, what the U.S. Constitution uh, fundamentally uh, is trying to accomplish, and both are likely uh, to uh, stretch and strain uh, with the U.S. Constitution, because the U.S. Constitution uh, was uh, written uh, at another time uh, with other political objectives in mind uh, than what uh, modern conservatives and modern liberals are, are primarily struggling and, and fighting um, over. So it wouldn't be surprising, uh, particularly, um, that there are going to be some tensions uh, between what uh, modern, modern conservatives are thinking about uh, and what the original meaning of the Constitution uh, is fundamentally um, up to. Uh, 